But in the commercial world, we haven't had that big run up yet. But you've seen rents rise the first half of 2021. It's all completely obvious what's happening. And cap rates are dropping. You're having cap rate compression. And do you see the fluctuation or the opportunities to tailing off or increasing? What do you see as far as the market conditions? Right now, the getting's good, right? Because in the re residential market has gotten really overheated, in my opinion, because of low supply. I think demand has even gotten lower, but because supply has dropped so much, that's what dictates the prices, which is very emotional driven. And that's why I don't like residential properties. But in the commercial world, we haven't had that big run up yet, but you've seen rents rise the first half of 2021. It's all completely obvious what's happening and cap rates are dropping. You're having cap rate compression, but it's not to a place where your average internet investor is like jumping into commercial properties quite yet. Maybe this time next year, for sure. Not. There'll always be deals because what makes for investment of banks lend money at X and the cap rates are Y. And there's always a difference between X minus Y. There will always be a differential, there will always be a difference. And then you apply leverage and that's how you make yield. The cap rates will always be making yielding more than interest rates in a world where gravity works. I'm sure it could go backwards for a little bit. I don't think it ever has, but that's what makes the world run. I think what you're getting to is, hey, what if I wait? If you wait, the best time to do anything was yesterday. They always change, like, for example, infinite banking, they always change the rules. Best time was yesterday. Best time to buy that rental was yesterday. It's just constantly going to be that. You guys are just like making it tough for your guys. <laughs> you can just be prudent, stoic, and just constantly dollar cost average and into stuff that makes sense. And it's difficult now because you're getting started. But to me, that's the outlook that you have. You don't need to be like me and have 100% of my stuff in alternate investments. That's for sure. I totally respect if you want 20 to 50% into paper assets. That's fine. But over time, the kind of the, the percentage definitely goes to the alternative asset size. You look at, I've seen this group on Tiger 21. It's all $10 million families and above own paper assets. They don't own like mutual funds and stuff like that. I, I do think that we'll always try to be conventional in some manner from our perspective, but I have a job to do and just convince my spouse that this is, you know, legit and try to jump into one of these like more conventional deals you do. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.